All right. So let's go ahead. Let's continue. Resume template. So let's see what a resume template I use personally. And you can either, you know, take pointers from this or you can use this and modify it according to your own requirements. So this is how my resume looks like. I'll make it slightly bigger so that it's legible. All right. If you are certified, don't forget to highlight that. So that's the first thing I've highlighted. I am an SAP certified consultant. So I have the certification logo. I'm, I'm licensed to use that from SAP. So make use of that. Give your LinkedIn um, link here so that the, the people who will be in the panel, they can easily go to your LinkedIn. They don't have to do a search and they don't have to find the right person. They can directly click on the link and see your profile. Highlight your core skills on the top. So I am basically a BW for HANA, SAC, C and business objects, embedded analytics. And recently uh, I should have added data sphere and uh, PAPM as well, which I have not. So this is a good reminder to myself that I should add those newly acquired skills uh, here as well. So make sure your core skills are all there. Career objective, I don't have to tell you this. This is a very generic statement, but keep it uh, concise. Many people I have seen career objective, they have a whole essay on career objective. Don't do that because nobody is going to read that. Just in a very simple and generic term, yeah, what I have uh, written is to contribute to the world of IT in a way which fosters innovation, growth and puts forward, forth new challenges. So very simple and concise. It has, it doesn't have to be a very detailed one, just a generic one will do. Profile highlights. This is all the recruiter will read. If your resume is four or five pages long, mine is, I think, four or five pages long. They are not going to read the entire resume. What they need is your highlights. What is the key, key skills and the experience you have? And you should put that on the very first page. I have seen resume where people start putting their projects. So I did, uh, I worked in company AYZ from here to here, and then I worked in company AYZ from here to here. And that's how they start after the career objective. They forget to mention the highlights on the very top because that's all a recruiter is going to need. So please make sure that you have highlighted. And if you're going for a job interview, which is SAC focused, put that in a bold or different color. Okay. And then after the interview, you can uh, put it in a regular way, just like the other points. But for that particular interview, highlight that. If you are going for a HANA uh, focused job, then I would I would highlight this in a different color. Six years of SAP native HANA experience. If you are going for a BW rated ABAP CDS view focused job, then highlight those. So that immediately it comes to the attention of the uh, recruiter and they know that how many years experience and how rich of an experience you have okay then after that certifications if you have any certifications please go for that again i have highlighted sac because this was a resume i used for one of the sac focused uh, jobs your merits and awards if you have any merits and awards if you have any blogs please uh, that goes a long way recruiters they really love if you are sharing your knowledge right this comes uh, through as sharing your knowledge. So please make sure, you know, you highlight that. So I have these blogs and white papers if you have them. And then I have my YouTube channel as well. So if you have uh, any YouTube channel or if you have any um, uh, videos which you have posted on Twitter, Facebook, which are, you know, uh, not personal videos, of course, the learning related videos, technology related videos, you can put it there. And then extracurricular if you have any. And then starts the actual experience. So what time period you have worked, which company you have worked. So here I have generalized it as Walmart everywhere. But of course, this is not going to be the case. I have just anonymized it uh, for, you know, obvious reasons. But you have to put the actual company name and then the time period you have worked with. Put the logo of the company. Every company has a logo. And then what you have done. So you work as a HANA, I worked as a HANA solution architect and specialist. These were my responsibilities. Again, keep it bullet points, keep it concise. Don't go elaborating on every point and make your resume 10 pages long because nobody is going to read that in, uh, to be honest. In fact, in my resume also, most of the time recruiters have mentioned that they don't go to experience and all. They just 
read their profile highlights and then they ask that okay tell me the projects on which you have sec just tell me about those projects they are interested in any other projects or any other experience but of course we have to mention what exactly uh, we did in that company and uh, from which time to which time we have worked so rest of the resume speaks about that and then finally i have put my education what i have done uh, i did my btech uh, and then uh, you know after that i i started working so this was my highest education if you have masters as well or a phd as well you should uh, highlight that because that also goes a long way in showing that uh, you know what is your education okay all right uh, i'll pause here again any questions on the resume template you can unmute yourself and ask your questions Okay. No questions. Hey, uh, Devanj. Uh, uh, sorry. Go ahead, please. I have also a question, but go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, will you be sharing this resume for with us for reference? Yes. Yes, I will be. I will be sharing. Okay. So I put this uh, resume template on uh, Microsoft OneDrive, and that OneDrive link will be shared uh, on LinkedIn. So. Uh, I have put this post for this interview readiness on LinkedIn, so I'll put the link there as well. Sure, thank you, uh, Dibanshu sir. Thank you very much for uh, giving us uh, the opportunity to even ask a question for uh, for this audience and for for you as well. So I have just uh, one question, uh, whichever you showed us uh, the resume. Yes. So sometimes when you completed the one contract and uh, then for the second contract you have some uh, sort of a gap between them. So how we can cover that gap? That's a great question. In fact, I I was uh, facing the same situation where I had the gap. So there are two ways to deal with the gap. The first way you can deal with the gap is if the gap is longer or if the gap is shorter. so the ways will differ accordingly so if the gap is shorter say for example 2 months then what you can do is you can what i have done is i have added 2 months in the previous company's experience so for example my previous contract ended uh in say for example march and my next contract i got in june so march march april may june four months are there okay say for example 3 months are there because i end, end of march i my contract ended so uh, april may and then june i joined so 2 months 2 to 2 and a half months if that is the duration then i would say that my previous contract ended on um, april somewhere or may somewhere just to reduce that particular gap that's one way because if it's too short like 2 to 2 and a half months it's okay the companies they don't go uh and will exactly match your date of your contract and they will ask you oh show me your uh, resignation letter show me your end date they don't do that so if it the gap is too short i would say increase that number of months two months two and a half months to your previous contract because all the comp- all all they need is references they ask for references give give me a name and email id of the manager or the lead you worked with in your previous company they don't ask you exactly which date you resigned exactly what was your last day show me the proof of that they don't ask that as long as you have done good work you have good rapport with your lead your manager and they can give a good feedback to the company that's good enough so the gap is covered there now the second scenario if the gap is more than 3 months right say 3 to 6 months the gap is there then you cannot say then you cannot add that to your previous company because then it will be a little bit of an integrity question uh, and then they can they can they can uh, inquire if it's more than 6 months or sometimes 8 months also so i would say 3 to 6 months that's a time frame then you show that as a poc that's what i did okay i had a gap of 4 months uh, in 2019 Uh, in a couple of my contracts 
I showed that as a POC experience. What POC? I did an SAC and data warehouse cloud. At that time, it was called data warehouse cloud. It was not called data sphere. So DWC and SAC POC. I I did a trial server. I uh, I just registered for a trial server. I went on a learning journey and I did step by step. Although it, it didn't take me three months or six months, I completed that in two two and a half months. But I showed that that I did my hands on in this latest technology using a trial server um, and a POC. POC stands for proof of concept. So that's how you can bridge the gap if the gap is long. That's what I have done. Of course, there are other ways as well, right? But without going into something fishy, saying something uh, fishy which can land you in trouble. these are the ways which i have which i will i will recommend thank you very much sir thank you no problem all right so let's go those were brilliant questions by the way so let's go ahead